Hello, I'm Joseph Ronka, and welcome to Creating a Human Rights Culture, which calls for a lived awareness of human rights principles in our minds and hearts and integrated into our everyday lives. Thus, it aims to promote awareness of the human rights triptych, which consists of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights at the center. It is the authoritative definition of human rights standards drafted under the able leadership of Eleanor Roosevelt. That document consists of five crucial notions, human dignity, non-discrimination, civil and political rights, economic, social, and cultural rights, and the rights to solidarity. It is increasingly being referred to as customary international law, which all nations and peoples of the world must abide. On the right panel, in brief, are conventions which have the status of international treaty, such as the rights of the child, the Convention to Eradicate Racial Discrimination, the Convention to Eliminate Discrimination Against Women, and the Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities. On the left panel are implementation measures, such as reports of special rapporteurs, reports to United Nations monitoring committees, and world conferences. But again, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is the authoritative definition of human rights standards, which was drafted under the able leadership of Eleanor Roosevelt. I'm here with Dr. Anthony Hill, Associate Professor of Social Work, a colleague. How long have I known you now? I don't know. Been here for 10 year. years? Eight years. Eight years. Yes. Okay. Good for you. Pleasure. Yes. Good okay. to be here. And, um, He's going to be continuing to talk about healthy masculinity, and healthy masculinity is ab obviously fundamental to creating a human rights culture, yes. as well as healthy femininity. Yes. So, um, so Tony, just uh, uh, keep on going. Tell me more about some of the programs you have, yeah. and then, uh, well, I'm kind of a macro person myself, and right. um, any advice you have for changing um, society, uh, the way uh, we, we socialize our, our boys. Um, yeah. Well, you know, I'm kind of a fan of David Chappelle. You know David yes, Chappelle? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> he has this thing about Pepe Le Pew, the skunk, mm -hmm. who's a rapist. And uh, he's wondering, what are we teaching our kids? Yeah. I mean, this is just so fundamental. Yeah. And I mean, I grew up with Popeye, who was violent and mm -hmm. smoked and, you know, um, I, I would imagine kids still watch this stuff. So I have uh, questions, uh, broader questions, about what we can do to stop socializing our boys into violence. Right. And, um, you know, apparently they're doing this to girls now, too. Yeah. Um, but um, so it's sort of taking on the alienated state of men. Yeah. This is what Yoko Ono said a while back yeah. about uh, what's going on. But that's another story. So, um, so keep on going. You're doing fine, um, and um, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. Well, what's interesting is <clears throat> usually I'm glad we're focusing on healthy masculinity. Yeah. Because when we talk about toxic masculinity, people may say, "Hey, listen, you're trying to make all our boys soft. Yes. You know, and not be men. You want all of everyone to be feminine." So someone uh, came up to me and said to me, I see you're doing all this work on t toxic masculinity, healthy masculinity. What do you want to get rid of football, huh? You want to get rid of football? Football's too violent for you, uh -huh. you know? And I think there is something to be said about well, I was football say that. and concussions, concussions and yeah. the long ra la lasting impact of that. So I'm glad that there are efforts to make it more safe. Exactly. Um, uh, but what I said to him was, I knew that he, like myself, was raising daughters. Yes. And I think he was not able to get it until I said to him, what type of men do you want to have in your daughter's life as they get older? Right. Interesting. And that made all the difference to him because then he was able to see that, you know, wow, I want someone who's going to be respectful, who's not going to be violent. Yes. Who's not going to uh, be a contributor, a positive force in his daughter's life. So I think that was able to see the importance and the vital nature 
uh, of this work. So um, again, looking at getting beyond the mask, getting beyond the mask and really allowing young men to be authentic, to be true to who they are. And um, just think about the pressure of saying at seven, eight years old, you know, we know single parent families of saying, you're the man of the house. You know, what does that mean? Well, there's you know? a lot of that in a weird kind of way. They yeah. have 14 year olds and 15 year olds that are kind of the man of the house. And yeah. you know, the parents might be uh, on drugs or something. And yeah. um, um, I mean this in a different sense, of course. Right. We're uh, pushing, <coughs> excuse me, yeah. pushing men, welcome, pushing men into um, these roles of machismo or something, yeah. um, and unwittingly I, even, but that's another story. And I, th I think it's important, I think it's important um, that individuals step up and... <laughs> Is that what's going on? Okay. I think it's very important for men to step up and contribute as much as possible. But also I think too that we really need to have mentors. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm not saying that women cannot uh, raise successful yeah, boys. Of uh, but I think also uh, having mentors, uncles, uh, religious figures, coaches, teachers also can play a role into socializing men to be healthy and to really have a respect uh, for women. So I, th so I think that's very, very vital. So, so I think this topic, I really focus on healthy masculinity instead of looking at a negative and saying toxic masculinity. And unfortunately, I think that people will look at it at dichotomous terms of saying masculinity is bad, you know, but I love being a male. Nothing wrong with being a male, but I think this healthy masculinity is I think Marin Wright Edelman says it best. Yes. Where she says. Yeah, she's um, great. I think she just retired. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, she Too did. Too bad. Well, Service that's okay. is the rent we pay for living on this earth. And then what I really like what she says is how can we make this world a better place than we found it? Right. So, so you know, what, what, what's your legacy? You know, so, so I'm, I'm glad and really thrilled that I've had the opportunity to work with young men to help them be full express, fully express themselves and being able to ask for help. Another thing that I've been able to work with these young men about is the stigma of mental illness. You know, so being able to yes. you know, address issues of trauma and to be able to engage in therapy and being able to ask for help and realize yeah, and as that I understand, depression I, is real, I anxiety is real. Before. Suicide among adolescent boys has gone like quadrupled or yes, something. Yes, yes. I mean, it's gone up with the girls too, yes. um, but it, but it apparently appreciably more with boys. Yes, uh, four times quadrupled in the last whatever. And and I think also white elderly males. It's yes. really off the charts with white elderly males as well. So that's really, another yes. I know. Yeah, yeah. So, so so. Um, Creating these safe spaces to have conversations and not just continuing to do the same old thing, continuing to get past the boys will be boys, but really beginning to shape and socialize uh, boys to be caring, to be loving, to be respectful to each other and also to young ladies as well. Sounds great. Yes. Yes. So. What else are we going to talk about? We don't have to complicate matters. I think that says it all. Yeah. But maybe you can um, talk more. Are there any talk more of some other programs that you know of that might be working? Well, and there, also a, talk great... about some of the, um, well, not failures, but some mm -hmm. of the things where you might have done, but they kind of didn't work out that, that good, that well. Yeah. And they had a change. I remember back in the, I think it was the 80s or the 90s, they had, they had this scared straight program. Mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. if you remember that. Mm -hmm. Prisoners, but they got up there and they start cursing and starting scaring people. Yeah. And um, kids, mostly boys, not to do, not to whatever, steal or act macho or do something. And it really backfired the whole yeah. thing. And, um, um, yeah, backfired. So yeah. in other words, um, we have tried things out to help men, boys, adolescent boys, and some of these were failures. Yeah. And um, 
you know, so maybe we could talk about some things that we've learned from the past. Yeah. You learned and also talk about talk about some of the successes. Well, one thing that I want to share with you, there's an organization out of New York. It is called a Call to Men. Uh huh. A Call to Men, and basically it's an organization um, that has great resources on its website. Um, <clears throat> also, they offer a free curriculum. So this organization a will Call go, to Men. Okay. Yes. So this organization will go out. Uh, into the community, so they'll work with sports teams, they'll work with uh, high school students, college students, to get this message of healthy masculinity out. I've had the opportunity last spring to attend a two-day uh, training institute hmm. uh, with them and uh, really gained some very valuable information about the role of um, toxic masculinity th throughout the ages. You mm -hmm. know, so uh, it's very helpful. Uh, one of the things that they have, too, is a free curriculum. So if in folks are interested in schools, to look at a middle school and high school, a free curriculum, you can go online, become certified, and to transmit this knowledge that I'm sharing with you today about how to sort of teach our young uh, boys how to be more respectful, more caring um, uh, boys. I think that would be very helpful to look at that uh, website and uh, a lot of... Um, it's a call to men dot org. One a call word. to men dot org. Yes. Okay. Yes. One word. Yes. Got that? A call to men dot org. Yes. One it's word. very helpful. Okay. Uh, there's a great um, one of the founders is uh, Tony Porter. Uh huh. And uh, he has a great, uh, well received uh, TED talk that he does. And talk. You should do a TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is a, an area of interest of mine, and um, I'm really glad that I've had the opportunity to be a part of it. Be a part of it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, well, are there any uh, you learned a lot at that conference? Are there any other things that you'd like to share with our viewers that you might have learned um, well, to complement some of the things you said? I don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. If, no, if there no, are I other think, things. No, I think it's great. And then I also want to talk a little bit about more. I'm sort of a macro person. Yeah. So you have someone who uh, you mentioned that guy before. He. Um, wanted to ace an exam, so he aces yes. an exam, he yes. wants to go to college. Yes. But then the tuition's out of sight, yeah. and he can't afford to go, and it's depressing. Yeah. yeah. And um, so we have to see everything in context. Yes. So we also, um, well, I think we need to have free college. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's paid for by taxes, obviously. Right. But um, that's also part of the whole shebang, yeah. I think. Yeah. And uh, we mustn't lose sight of that. So well, the whole issue of access. The issue of access. Access and opportunity. I, I agree. To health care yes. in college. Yes, yes. Well, so, Joe, you probably realize this. I, I know I utilize this. Is uh, Michael Moore's, who, who do we invade next? So it talks about. you got to be joking. <laughs> I, I use Michael Moore all the time. Okay, okay. And, so, yeah, most of my students like it, but yeah. I don't know. One student that said, what do you have against this country? <laughs> but it's, it's really interesting to, to think about. Is, it's really interesting know, to really um, look at. They don't, they don't give junk food to the kids. Yeah. yeah. You know, where to invade next is great. Yeah. And you think yeah. about it's all about war, but it really isn't. Basically what he looks at is the ideas that originated in the United States other countries are taking these ideas and utilizing them and having innovative policies and programs. And yes. it's doing well. So when he said, where do we invade next? He's saying, we're going to invade these other countries that have successful practices that originated right here in the United States. And how do we implement those back and steal those back and utilize this? So you talked about the issue of college tuition. Right, it's school free lunches, in Europe, basically. Uh, no homework. Paper, but yes, yeah. daycares. Yeah, daycare. You know, uh, uh, student loans. You know, we're interviewing students and they're saying, "What is what are student loans? What does that mean? I don't know what that means." They have no idea. Yeah. Uh, social workers get sabbaticals roughly every four years. Yeah. They're off for three months. Wow. And when they go on internships, uh, the, the school pays for them. Wow. I tell these to my students and they freak out. Yeah. I say, "No, there's other places." Yeah. Um, so can I make a joke? Sure. Is this what Trump meant by make America great again? Mm. I'm making a joke <laughs> because 
Yeah. We did a lot of great stuff. Even yeah. when the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was drafted, and I'm sure Donna Hicks spoke about that, um, Eleanor Roosevelt was an American, and she was the chair of the drafting committee. Wow. So maybe this is what Trump meant. It's a joke. I don't think that's what he meant. No, no. No, but no. Um, the American delegation was for free education, free health care. Well, it was paid for by taxes. Mm -hmm. And they were pushing this stuff. And well, in a weird kind of way, that document wouldn't have been around if it weren't for us. I mean, in a weird kind of way, well, we were major leaders. I don't think we're leaders now because yeah. we have all kinds of uh, problems here. What's, what's with interesting? Education. Yeah. And there's something like, what, 250 school shootings last yeah. year, I believe, something like that. The yeah. next highest country was, I believe it was Canada with two or something. Yeah, it's unreal. Or Germany. Unreal. So um, we're talking about more macro, ma more macro issues now, but well, when you I think, think about it's all related. <coughs> so, Excuse me. Anyway, yeah. So when you, when, when you think about uh, child care and the expense of child care, when you think about college tuition, yes. when you think about health care, yes. and when you also think about putting um, parents giving them home care, home health aid and care yes. as, as they become seniors. And what's interesting, I'm looking at those other countries, and their tax rate is not that much higher than ours, but their taxes cover all those expenses. Well, so. with tuition and co-pays, I believe we pay more. Yes, yes. With the equivalent of taxes. Yes. I'll never forget that scene. It was on Michael, one Michael Moore movie, where the single mother was having problems. Uh, she was trying to raise, I think, three kids. So Michael Moore said, well, does the government do your laundry too? In the next scene, someone was from the government doing the laundry for her. Wow. Helping wow. her out. Wow, wow. Uh, so, you know. I think Europe is much more advanced yeah. than yeah. we are. Yeah. Of course, when I say that, some people go, well, move there. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, as I said, is, yes. you know, they don't have as many school shootings, you know, tuition is free, and, you know. Yeah. So all this is related to health, healthy masculinity. Well, I, we'll keep I, on going. I, well, so. well, I think, we sort of went you know, off on a tangent. When you, when you also think about, um, Peace, mm -hmm. you know, in this issue of competition, mm -hmm. you know, but imagine if we had like a peace studies. Well, they have peace know. studies. Yes, but it's not as widespread, you know, this focus and proliferation on war. I heard someone say, uh, wouldn't it be great if our schools had everything they needed instead of having bake sales? But wouldn't it be great if the military would have to have a bake sale? You know, but we just spend and spend and spend on military. Like killing strangers. But imagine and even if though we invested I know that some, money in Some education. viewers are veterans and they're married to veterans and I, yeah. I'm 100% I'm in support of veterans. Yes. They put themselves in harm's way. Yes. In pure, in their conscience. I wonder, just want to say I'm 100% of support of them. They're not treated very well. Right, right. On the other hand, I just want to say that uh, what people say is our history books. Mm -hmm. Basically, they do nothing but kind of support male hegemony. Yeah. I don't know. When I was a kid, I was there with my go kart and playing marbles and stuff. And then mm -hmm. I go to school, and then all of a sudden, there's the Revolutionary War, War of 1812, World War II. I didn't realize we were so violent, and it, I started getting socialized into thinking the way to resolve problems is through mm -hmm. violence. Yeah. And this is the way most boys, I think, are socialized. Yeah. So, so, we definitely so that's to, a more macro yeah. issue. Definitely have to change that uh, paradigm. And as I mentioned, really looking at how boys are socialized, but also how young ladies, how girls are socialized as well. So when you think about the images, uh, body image and size, and what was interesting, just, just reading recently, uh, the increase in anxiety and depression and mental illness uh, of children, uh, not only adolescents, but also children. And really Suicide rates this, have gone up um, for kids under age seven. Yeah, yeah, wow, that's astonishing. Yes. That's astonishing, yeah. Totally astonishing. Yeah. I only know what my New York Times tells me. Yeah. So. Yeah, amazing, amazing, so.
with anything. So what can our viewers do? Do you have any advice um, to help promoting healthy masculinity um, um, throughout our culture? How we could change our culture so that well, I think as we know better, um, I think boys' growth and development, and girls, of course, but, yeah. you know, the growth and development could be promoted. Yeah. I think awareness is key. I think okay. we need to be more aware. And I think knowledge and seeking knowledge on this topic, because I think as we know better, then we can do better. So okay. instead of continuing to do the same old things, again, I want to say that I don't want to stop out, stomp out masculinity, you know, but I think that we have to really look at uh, the toll and the cost of our narrow constriction of what masculinity is and the damage that's being done. So I think we need to really take stock of uh, this issue of aggression, this issue of misogyny, uh, this hatred of women, this issue of males not being able to feel, of being tough, and how not everyone fits into that mold. Not everyone wants to be a football or basketball uh, or sports but really allowing men and women to fully be expressive of their own identity, I think is crucial. And I think parents play a, a great role. They do play a great role, um, obviously. And like I said before, there are a lot of studies that say when the, the father takes an interest in their kids um, and spends a lot of time with them, especially girls actually, mm -hmm. okay, it's a tremendous predictor of empathy. Yes. They have a lot more empathy. I'm not, again, I'm not minimizing the role that uh, mothers can have. Yes. And uh, certainly if a kid grows up without a father, that doesn't mean they are not going to be empathetic. I mean, you or know. Or be successful. Yeah, I mean, it's totally ridiculous, yeah. you know. And, um, you know, but I'm trying to say that sometimes men have not been given their base, uh, uh, credit for the fact that they can be nurturers. Yes, yes. You know? Well, usually you'll hear people say boys need their fathers. Yeah. But I think you raise a good point of also girls also need their fathers to be actively involved in their lives. Yes. Because you often hear this slogan, looking for love in all the wrong places. Yes. You know, so, you know, you really want to, and I've heard, and this is really germane to me because I have two daughters. Yeah, you I know, know you do. So I, I, I really one. want my um, daughters to be in healthy relationships, you know, and who they choose, I hope, will be a reflection of the experience that I've had with them, you know. So I want them to be uh, strong. I want them to know that they can do anything, that uh, they can be strong, independent, and they can be in partnership as opposed to being subservient um, to uh, a male. Yeah, sounds sounds uh, good to me. Yes. So, who are some of the uh, people out there that you think are good role models for uh, for men? And do any of the boys uh, talk about them? Um, you know, when I was a kid, we really didn't have that many. Yeah. Well, I used to like uh, who? Danny Kay. Uh, no, you don't even know who he is, but he was a children's thing. He was sort of the Angelina Jolie of the fifties. <coughs> yeah. And uh, there was John F. Kennedy. Mm -hmm. uh, there were some pretty good people out there. Um, but nowadays, um, who do the kids have? I mean, well, I think um, the students, uh, the y young people. I don't people's... really think of our president as the yeah. ex good example. Well, I think I Barack think Obama, Obama was I think Trump good. Was, a, was a great example of being a, a, a loving father, a caring husband, and someone who had great character. Yes, a great character. I think, unfortunately... I mean, what uh, do the kids say nowadays? I mean, who do they look up to Well, in the I, media? I'm just wondering. I still think they look up to uh, rappers, so hip-hop artists, okay. athletes, you know, so, so I think that's a, a major uh, focus. Um, it was interesting, just recently, um, celebrities. Yes. So, uh, you know, those who are on, they called them... Um, social influencers. So people who are on YouTube and these videos or celebrities, um, they're sort of looking up to them. But I think the role model should be close uh, and hopefully will be in the family. 
Uh, so hopefully it would be teachers, it would be coaches, it would be something that, that they can see that's close as opposed to something that's out there because uh, the grass may look greener on the other side, but I heard someone say, but somebody has to mow it. Well, that's a good one. You know, so, so someone has to mow it, someone ha and you look at the grass and it looks greener on the other side, but I heard someone say, but you don't know the water bill <laughs> to keep that grass green. So looks can be deceiving. So it would be great if there were role models that were close, that someone that they could talk to, um, could ask questions and answer questions, and to be a present um, uh, help to some of the struggles that they might be going through. And this is all our challenge. Yes. Challenges. Yes. Our viewers. And Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Um, this has been great. Well, thank you for you having me. Do you have any other final words of wisdom or lack thereof? Well, uh, I think that when we think of um, what does it mean to be a man, we think of being strong, being a protector, showing compassion, showing empathy, and I think showing love. And I don't think that's just uh, leadership. But I don't think that's just masculine traits. I think those are just human traits. And you can also say that females and girls can also be all of those attributes as well. So, so you mentioned love. So why don't I um, end with a quote from my childhood hero who was um, Crazy Horse. And um, I did a book report on Crazy Horse. We had to choose a famous person, and he was a Native American. Mm -hmm. And my teacher made me do it over. He said, who cares about Crazy Horse? And he literally said, why don't you do it on General Custer or President? So I did it on General Custer, hated the guy. So I was literally told mm -hmm. to do a book report on a white supremacist, mm -hmm. literally. But uh, Crazy Horse um, was a great humanitarian. He was a human rights person. And um, there is what is referred to as the spirit of Crazy Horse, which is having the vision of the eagle um, the eagle goes right into the storm and the courage, but the courage of the eagle, but basically having uh, peace, humility, and everlasting love. And I think uh, that's what it's about, and Crazy Horse. Um, yeah, he was a man and he was a great humanitarian. He could yeah. never understand how, um, well, white people, he would say, are so evil to one another. Yeah. The way the yeah. elders are treated, mm -hmm the way children are treated, and he was a humanitarian. humanitarian. Yeah. And he met the same fate uh, that kind of Malcolm X met. Just, he got stabbed in the back and died, and Malcolm X was talking, got shot. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. maybe if you're for everlasting love or for human rights, I don't know, people don't like it or something, yeah. especially yeah. if you're, you're a man. So thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you. maybe we'll uh, do this again sometime. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks and, for having me. Glad um, to be here. Thanks, everyone, for uh, tuning in and listening. So uh, take care of yourself and take care of others as needs be.